This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by Omax CryoFreeze. More on that in just a minute, but before that, I want to let you know about some dates. I'm coming out there, y'all. Uh, let's see here. In L.A., February 22nd, Ice House in Pasadena, headlining the show that night. Um, come out, Pasadena, L.A., February 22nd. March 19th through the 21st, Phoenix. Phoenix. I'm coming back to Phoenix. House of Comedy, Phoenix, March 19th through the 21st. March 26th, I'll be at the La Jolla Comedy Store headlining that night. March 26th at the La Jolla Comedy Store. And then in April, I'll be up in Vancouver, uh, April 23rd through the 25th. So go to ryansickler.com, sign up for the email newsletter, and check out my dates and come see me. You're watching The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler at your mom's house. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here at Studio Jeans doing it at your mom's house. I'm Ryan Sickler. Ryan Sickler on all social media. RyanSickler.com is where you can go to find out all the information you need to know about me. Uh, the show here, the HoneydewPodcast.com. Links are there for everything. Sign up for the website. Go check out my dates coming out there to see you guys this year. Um, and just... Excited to keep this thing going here at YMH Studios. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page. Um, happy to have this guest back on here to highlight some lowlights with us. A return guest, the boss, y'all. Tom Segura, everybody. Oh, Welcome back to the Hollywood Tom. Thanks for having me again. Teddy Fresh. Teddy Fresh. Teddy Fresh. That's tight. That's a good line of clothing right there. Yeah, thanks, Ethan and Ela. Yeah. Um, all right, Teddy well, you, Looms, man. Yeah, that's what I thought. For, for real, I thought you had a Teddy Looms line of clothing for a second. And if you did, that's what he would call it, too. Teddy, <laughs> Teddy, fresh. Teddy stay fresh, man. <laughs> and the colors would just be opposite. I have a lot of happiness inside. <laughs> that's what he would be doing is like he's been fighting. He's probably in therapy and they're like, you need to embrace colors and patterns. You know, you have so much darkness in your life. And Teddy would be like, oh, I created some palettes that are satisfying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, Joyful spring colors. You texted me yesterday that every kiss begins with case. Dude, I laughed out loud when I saw that. I just started laughing. Christina, about. like, she was like, "You guys." We saw a commercial, and she goes, "She goes, uh, every kiss begins with case." And I was starting to laugh, and I was like, oh, "She goes, only you and Ryan thought that was the funniest fucking thing ever." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Everybody does." She goes, "Nobody understands why you're laughing." <clears throat> Why would that guy be singing that jingle to himself is Every fantastic. Every kiss begins with K's. And that high pitch with an S on the end. And ending, uh, yeah, throwing the unnecessary S on it. When people say that about uh, like names like, oh, you mean Ryan Sicklers? Ryan Sicklers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's my friend. Yeah, that's my friend. Yeah, Sicklers is a good guy. Um, well, we have some good stuff to get into today. So before we do, please plug everything. Plug it all. Plug it all. Um, I'm, I'm going back to do some clubs in 2020 to try to figure out some new shit. I'm doing dates in Spanish, all Spanish shows. Um, are you really? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Uh, so those are all, they're all at TomSegura.com. I have some uh, some club dates. Uh, the, the tour ends, my last tour date's the 25th in New Zealand, and then it's it's all uh it's back to the clubs man try to figure out a new hour and then uh let's see oh, i'm doing a, the, a podcast in spanish yeah so it's uh, tom segura in espanol it's on my personal youtube page uh youtube slash tom segura and uh yeah man we're just doing you know we're pumping out podcasts here dude so i love to, it yeah it's going everything well. going on look at all these days yeah doing vegas i have a vegas deal at, I'm at the mirage this year or 2020 yeah so um if you want, I'm going in March, May, and then I have a couple a couple other ones coming up. But I'm hitting a couple clubs, Dayton, uh, West Palm, etc. So Brea, hit it up, TomSegur.com. That's great. Um, all right, I know we were talking before, so I, I guess I just want to get into this. Just as you do, you ask me just really deep, thought provoking questions, and you just spat out to me, um, "What's the gayest shit you've ever done?" That's <laughs> yeah. what you just said to me before we started yeah. recording. <laughs> Yeah. And I honestly can answer you and say that the gayest shit I've ever done is the shit that I've been made to do. The the yeah. showering with children in middle school for yeah. no fucking reason. Dude, and like that's the it's no one coaches you up for get ready for be publicly exposed. No. As a kid, this is the shit that was first of all, that shit was horrifying. I was on the swim team 
um, in like from being like from seven, eight years old through let's say maybe 10 or 12 it wasn't that long but that age and you're done swimming they're like cool go shower now and you're like i was just in the water yeah i mean but also like there's i remember being eight or nine and swimming at a public pool and you go to change and there's a 16 year old and you see hair on his Raw, dick yeah, and the like, hair blows fuck. your mind when you first yeah and you're like it. i don't have any hair i just got this little dick and nothing to hide hide it under it's terrifying when i got to high school in I was first I was in high school in the Milwaukee area and that was a big public high school and showers were just you know that was that's what it was it's still like kind of unnerving to shower I think with other kids kids you're in school with. but especially at that age, there's something to shower like I remember going into the like gyms that I belong to in my teens or early 20s yeah. and seeing these guys that have balls hanging down there. And, but at that point, they didn't give a fuck about anything. No. But at that age, like 12, 13. Terrifying. Terrifying. I remember terrifying. doing basketball practice in middle school and people just would hide behind shit to change. Yeah. Yeah. Like they would walk around, they would find like a locker sticking out, go behind the locker, change there and come out fully dressed. Right, like they, like, like, like what'd you keep back there, man? <laughs> like, yeah, like they had a closet back there or something. I got a locker back. Yeah, there. but that's how terrifying it was to be naked, and then you have like these old, you know, PE teachers who are like, "What's wrong with you guys? Just change." We're like, "Cause we're fine." I don't know, man. This you feels, guys come from the Porky's days. Yeah, this you know feels what I mean. Weird. Like when yeah. that shit was going on back no then. No one's when doing people this. People wore yet. jock straps just to wear a jock strap. Yes, you know. Yes. Um, but it, it couldn't have happened to a funnier person for me my, one of my best friends still his name's matt Schilling, and um in middle school that's what they would do that after every gym class you had to get in the shower and it was a big open room like this that's with how they heads are heads on the wall with, yeah you know, 20 of them in yep. a circle or whatever it is and then you had to go in and then the teachers would stand at the door watch you yep on top of already everything that's going on in your head and then hand you the towel and you get out so alphabetically S H. There's some teachers loving that man, loving it. Yeah. S H S I. He's my. He's the cubby next to me in gym class. Everything's alphabetical. So he would strip down naked. He would stay bent over. You know, he would run bent like this, trying to cover his dick the best he could. <laughs> Sprint into the shower. He would do a circle, a lap, just a lap. Would get his back wet real quick, and he grabbed that towel and get the fuck out of there. That's funny. Because we had one great white shark and his name i'm just gonna say his first name was marlo and i'm not gonna say his last name because he got into some shit later that i, I could i could end up dead for a second. everybody everybody know marlo <laughs> and marlo got in the shower in seventh grade and marlo had a 30 the dick of a 32 year old blessed man you yeah, know what i mean yeah. he would shower he would shower you yeah, know what i mean yeah, He'd be yeah, like, yeah. Spout y'all. <laughs> he took his fucking time we're like yeah. What the fuck, fuck is, is that? that? Yeah. That's bigger than my dad's dick. Yep. You know? <laughs> it's crazy, right? To see yeah. a dick like that. <laughs> Look, on that kid, yeah, like, man, you see, like, you know, like you ever see big puppy paws? Like, oh, you're gonna grow into those. Yeah, oh, yeah. He still hadn't grown into the it was like he had a dick that he had to grow into. He, he was gonna get to it later. Yeah, like eventually yeah. it will be proportionate. Sure, but right after now, graduate school. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I saw dude. <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. This is so bizarre. <laughs> So we move from, I'm a freshman in high school. I just, my, my dad, that's how much my dad, my dad loves football. I'm playing freshman football at this big high school in the Milwaukee area. And he got this job, he was gonna be transferred to this job in Florida. So it's like, we know in, let's say, uh, July, August, he's like, well, we're moving. And I'm like, oh, okay, he's like, uh, let's see, football ends in November, so I guess we'll move at the end of November. I'm like, You're, we're staying here, just, just for just for freshman football. Really? Yeah. He's like, he's like, he's like, you can't, we can't leave during football season. I'm like, you're crazy. So, we freshman football freshman season. football. Yeah. So we go zero and nine. Nah, he <laughs> stay, uh, yeah. even after zero and seven, yeah. he stays. Yeah, he's, <laughs> we're the worst team. Uh, and then, so I transferred. Now I transferred to this school in Florida and they have spring ball, right? Spring football. So I'm on the spring, I'm on the J, no, I'm on the varsity team, uh, a, a freshman year, but going into spring ball. Okay. So, and 
it's my first first of all you're new i'm new and i'm an underclassman i'm a freshman i get we, we do our first practice and you know we've finished so we're changing taking shirts and your helmet and you're, you're putting up and then i'm watching people go to the to the shower and they're upperclassmen sophomores juniors and seniors and i'm watching them all go to the and i'm standing at my locker and i'm watching them and they're all going to the shower area in their boxers so i'm like oh maybe there's like somewhere to hang it or they there's laundry i don't know because I'm, I'm new so i'm like all right i keep my boxers on and then i walk through the locker room to the showers and i look in the shower everybody's showering with their boxers on really yeah in their boxers and I, I think it's so weird, but I'm also, thank God. I'm thank God, but I'm yeah. also an underclassman. So I'm like, I'm not going to pipe up. And then I'm like, all right. So I shower. And then one of the coaches is like, you guys are fucking weird. Like he comes in, starts telling them. And I'm like, he's like, why are you wearing your boxers? I'm like, I'm a freshman. Go talk to one of the yeah, seniors, man. Right. So he just like ridicules them and then leaves. And I'm like, this is so bizarre. And then. You know, I go to the next practice, and then it's, it's they keep doing it. Then the season starts; everybody's doing it. No one, the whole team, the is doing whole this. team showers in their boxers, gets out, and then like changes from their bo like at their locker. But nobody showers naked except for one guy. <laughs> Our Marlo, your Marlo, yeah. <laughs> and he has the dick of two dads. <laughs> <laughs> and he is black as night and this thing looks like a fucking like a growth it looks a like growth some, yes it looks like something might be wrong it's such a big dick i would say his first name but there's only one so yeah i don't think you it won't hide who i'm talking about but um he was always like i got no problem we're like yeah of course so he just displayed that thing and he would also shower like you're saying fully shower and then come out and talk Sing and he would shit. talk to yeah. people like Chat, uh, with the shower towel over the shoulder yeah, not you, around his you waist you doing that class yeah, this year yeah. or what and like you're like yeah man and he was just <laughs> <laughs> just stand in front of you and talk to you yeah and that dick was like i mean he had a really really impressive dick it's something it's got to be weird too to be a grown man and be the teacher and look in that shower and be like that kid's dick's five times the size of my dick that's got to be weird. They had to think that. Had, and they had, they had. I mean, our, even the coaches, they had to be like, you see that kid's dick. Like, they're yeah. talking about it after having beers. Like, just yeah. can we, hold on, let's talk about the cover two in a second. You <laughs> yeah. see that kid's fucking dick. That kid. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to have to give him two scholarships. <laughs> we want you to play linebacker. And we want that dick to return yeah, punts. That's right. Yeah. 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 Your yeah. dick's a kick return. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> Oh, it's just so weird that they would lump you in like that at the weirdest time of your life and then just say, figure it the fuck out. Everyone's so insecure are you, and maturing at different times. It doesn't. It definitely changes, you, but are you fully comfortable with being nude now in uh, any like set, like any locker rooms? No. Like, yeah, I'm not. No. No. I'm good being in boxers, you know, I'm good, or a yeah. towel around me. I'm good with that. But, but dick no. out and everything? No, nah, I don't. It's not necessary. Did, did, okay, because you you were you said you were single at times during the um, technological revolution. I, I never was. Do you send dick pics? Never, never, never. I just don't. I don't understand the point of it. First of all, all I ever hear is women complain about it anyway. Yeah, and then I'm like, it's true. They're always like, always, gross, or yeah, like gross. I don't want like, for this. I yeah. don't want this, you know. And even the ones that get it that I've known that are that do like it, they're just like, man, just it's a dick. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, I always just think in terms of like, I, I'd never ever sent one. Was like, uh, that's just like, like that's blackmail kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like potentially embarrassing in any number of circ. Not just like to get you back, but it's like. Do you want the access of that out? I always thought in those terms, like, would you want that out there just for any reason? And I was always like, oh, my God, I, I can't imagine having that out there. But no. I guess that's the norm now. I, I mean, I guess everybody's like, yeah, I can't imagine. Do it you, get, ever, do you ever get hit up? Like, are they are you, are you ever DMing or texting someone? And they're like, how about a dick pic? Like, do they ask you for it? That's a great question. No, I've never had a woman. 
I've had plenty of pictures sent my way, unsolicited yeah. videos. I've had videos come yeah. my way. Shit, I can't even. I, but I, never, they're like, never. What's up with that for dick? Like, show me that dick, man. Yeah. You know, I, I should actually wish. I think these guys all send their dicks. They probably all do. Yeah. They're that age. They're younger. Yeah. They think they're still thinking with it. Yeah. Yeah. Dress it up and send a pic. Nobody. What is it? Even if it was Marlo's dick, maybe I would send that. Yeah, if you had I'd Marlo's dick. I'd have to send dick. two pictures. I'd have to send, I'd have to get that <laughs> landscape on for that fucking seventh grade. <laughs> seventh grade. What you dick. want, the base or the tip? <laughs> <laughs> click, click. <laughs> yeah. You swipe right. I'm going to have my yeah. aunt hold the camera and take this picture right That's, here from, from a distance. Yeah, I'm still like, I'm not like uh, mortified, but I'm, yeah, I'm I'm not proud but well, it's not that i'm not proud of my dick at all i just think that if we're going to capture anything it should be women are just they're curvaceous yeah and they're much more beautiful beings curvy. of course God, yeah i mean it's just a dick uh. you know it's like here's my arm i've seen a bunch of those i've seen a bunch of those you know yeah but also we're wired differently and a nip slip gets this fucking guys all in a tizzy girl it's like, true i don't really yeah his balls no, hanging out That's i love disgusting. your balls yeah, so right? hot. You, <laughs> sliding I can, out of the I side can of picture that bag sitting yeah. on my face <laughs> if there's a chick's vagina slightly out of her fucking shorts oh. guys are like fuck yeah and if our ball bag just drips do you out a do little this? bit look at this fucking piece i look of shit. every time every time i see an attractive woman post something that is even somewhat somewhat but not like you know, near new, let's say just at the beach. I always, always, always immediately in on Instagram load comments. And I start looking to see how many fucking guys out there were like, are just like, Oh, I would love to pump and dump inside of you. And I'm like, I'm like, geez, like, cause there's never, it never doesn't happen. No, they're always, always just somebody like, out there. you can yeah. fucking shit in my mouth. And yep. I'm like, wow. It's just testosterone yeah. screaming on the internet at everything. At everything. Yeah. yeah. It's always like yeah. that. Don't even shower. Social I media I want you to stink. Testosterone like, voice. Jesus, man. Yeah. yeah. It just barks. Yeah. And I'm always like, I mean, I just look for it because I know it's going to happen. But uh, I'm like, what? I don't know. Do you think that's going to work? Right. Nice snatch. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Let me hit this guy. Let up. me fuck you. Yeah. And <laughs> like, if it does work, those are the girls you don't want to fuck. That's for sure. Yeah. Twice. You don't want to fuck them twice. All right. So we have some more stuff I wanted to talk to you about. Um, all right. So I asked you about. Uh, can we go into the, the story? The yeah, whatever you story? want. Yeah. All right. I'll go. We'll go to that after. But the uh, the story you told on this is not happening about overdosing. Yeah. You just said that there were some warning signs before that you're going to tell us about. And then I asked you if you ever talked about what, because I am curious, what, like, did they make you go to rehab? So tell us yeah. a little bit about before and then, a and, and you can sum up the story uh, and then go. Yeah. Yeah. After. So I started, I started fucking with GHB. Why and how? Uh, senior year of high school. One of the kids, the first time he mentioned it, he was in the, he was in the, really into training, like bodybuilding. And he was like, cause that was how it, the thing kind of started get, getting out there was like, oh, this is like a supplement, uh, uh, bodybuilders take it, right? Because your body naturally produces this. <laughs> one. And of course it's just like, it's a way in, but then it ends up not being that at all. Cause they sold some form of this in, in like the supplement companies, you know, in the stores. But what you end up buying on the streets is a totally different. It's not the shit Barry Bonds and all these guys nah, nah, eating in Major League Baseball at the time. It's, I mean, it's, they use it as anesthesia when it's like made in a facility, and they use it. They administer it to knock you out for surgery. Right. And so we were taking it during lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how? So is we it would liquid, liquid you... form. So it tastes exactly like ocean water. So it was just like tastes like salt water. But we would always take the same dosage, which is uh, you'd get a, a bottle of water, twenty ounce bottle of water. You, you screw the cap off, you pour it in the cap, and shoot the That's cap. That's it. That's it. That little bit and that, that cap. little bit would fucking hit you quick. But too. is it? Are you at with that amount? Are you microdosing? Or are you? Is that like a full? That's on, what holy all shit. I ever heard was the right amount to take, no more, no less. Like take that, and you will be fucking 
chilling. And like, you're doing that at lunch. We're doing that at lunch and then going to the second class, like the Which second half what, of class after lunch. Uh, I had like English and. And are you like, feel, are you, sm what's the high? Smile, you fork, yeah, you smile yeah, ear to ear, yeah. like you love in English and shit? Yeah. Like you're like. Tom's always happy. Yeah, class. like that. Yeah, after lunch. After lunch. Yeah. yeah. But the thing but that was you, cool is yeah. that it would, I mean, if you're trying to disguise your high, it wouldn't affect your eyes. Like your pupils wouldn't change. They wouldn't be red. Like if you smoke weed or. Are you slow you don't thinking yeah. or. Um, like if they asked you a normal question. You, you should be able to like, yeah. yeah to, and where are you sneaking it? Do you go in like the bathrooms and stuff or just. People would keep it in their cars, and even and, and as uh, seniors, we we could leave campus. Oh, okay. So we would do that, like go take a hit of it, and go back to class. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, and how many people do you know at the time are all doing this shit? People that know about, I think, I think there's like a group of twenty five that know about it, and I would say like regular users, it's like around ten. And regular meaning daily for you? I mean, not every single day. But like most days, a couple of days a week during school and on the weekends, like for parties and everything, for sure. And where are you getting it? Who gets where, it? from? Uh, there's a couple of kids that that start being like the regular providers. Out, of it. Were they already graduated? Or are they in school? They're in school. They are. They're in school. Yeah. And then I remember uh, I got some when I went to college and it was fucking weak. And I remember being so upset. And I also the guy thought everybody when I first got to high school, um, in Florida, everyone thought I was older and they thought I was a narc. And then when I got to college, <laughs> did they really? Oh yeah. When I got to college, that there, kid got beat up at our school at a party. Oh really? Yeah. The, you, the Tom Segura at our school got his ass beat. When I got to party. college, they were like, you're 35. Like there, <laughs> no, nobody thought like they all yeah. were like, and then I was big. I had a beard and there was a D2 school and all these guys were like, do you play football? I was like, no, I, I used to. And then, and then when I was shortly thereafter asking for drugs, they were like, this guy looks like he's 30. <laughs> he's not playing ball, but he should be. And he's trying to get like they, so I, I actually cop, bought cop, it. Cop, 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 yeah. cop. The guy who I bought it from, this is how dumb he was. He was like, meet me in the dorm, like these, the lobby of this dorm. And I was like, okay. And he was like, you're, de you're definitely not a cop, right? And I was like, nah. And so I go in the, to the lobby and he stands like on the other side of the lobby and he goes, he starts pointing and I'm like, what? And he's like, and he points to a pay phone and I see the, like a bottle there. And then he goes like, like put the cash there and leave with like, if I'm a cop, this doesn't register. Right. Yeah. This <laughs> is like, this is this keeps me out of yeah, jail. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> so I walked over, and he would just go like he would like, no, don't talk. And I'm like, oh. like nod at him, and then I just put the money down. And took it. It was so watered down. Taking it really didn't do. Sh it wasn't like the Florida shit, which was like. Yeah, what is that the A1 high like? stuff? It is euphoric. I mean, it's immediate too. So that was the thing. It is. You know, how you long take, does it last? I'm trying to remember exactly. A couple I mean, hours? I feel like it was something like that. Get you almost to the end of school? Yeah. Yeah. And then you would kind of come out of it and feel, yeah. you didn't feel hungover. You felt fine. You Did know? you feel like you wanted it again though? Was it addicting? In it that wasn't sense? like that. It wasn't like I got to get another hit. hit. No, it wasn't a crave thing. It wasn't a crave thing, but you're like, it's fun. It feels good. You know, it was great for boredom. Like, you know, we're we're bored. Yeah. Especially your last few months of senior, you're like, oh my God, like, yeah. I can't wait to get over with this. And then it would make you, uh, to me, I should say, uh, socially more comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, like the insecurities yeah. of socializing and you're like, which a lot of times people, you know, they say having a drink loosens them up, blah, blah, blah. It was, it was great for that, for like social stuff. You would just feel, I don't know, less insecure about you know, whatever, yeah. saying anything, you just would feel like fine. Like, you know, and, and if you felt, uh, knocked down by any moment, you would just be like, not bothered. Just keep going. I start, I remember I had a bottle that I put in my backpack and on a family vacation, <clears throat> a bottle of, of the straight GHB, GHB. Street GHB. How much, how big of a bottle? In a water bottle. So in a 20 ounce, but I had like half of it full and I was in in a, in a, on a family vacation and I would lean in the back seat and hit it in the car and then just fucking 
You're like, it's the best family vacation yeah. ever, guys. Just on a long drive. Just so I started to fuck around with it more, and then two tam- two times I remember something. Once we went to a concert in like Fort Lauderdale, and we're coming back, and I'm not driving. I'm 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 a passenger. And I'd taken it and they all, everybody who would sell you GHB would always give you a, a warning about, man, just whatever you do. You shouldn't be doing this. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want They're you to like, know, this whatever is you do, super dangerous. You should not be doing this. <laughs> but they would always tell you to like, to watch your doses on it. So like, be careful, you know, like hit What's it. What's the recommended? A cap take, full? Take a cap. A day? Or well, they're just it? like, take a cap's going to do it right. That's so it. just don't, you know. You don't need to do this until you don't feel it again. Right, yeah. But they would always, always, always warn you not to drink on it. Okay. Because the they were like, that is a deadly combination. I think at that age, you know, people tell you that with like, you know, remember getting high, super high? No, getting drunk first mm-hmm. and then smoking. And you'd be like spinning and spin. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And I would, I would pray. I'd yeah. be like, God, please let me die. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I would feel so bad. I'm okay with this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay with not Take living. Me. Take yeah. me now. Take me. I'm all right with this. So I remember that that warning would come a lot, but we go to this concert, I take a hit and like, maybe you're just like not feeling it immediately. So let's have a beer. And I start having a couple beers. I'm at this concert. I'm with a group of people. Everything at the concert's fine. I think we get back in the to head back and I take a shot. That's what it was after having some beers. Oh, okay. And dude, all I remember is like getting back from the drive and being like sh- like shaken and they're like you were fully out, like completely out for a while and I was like, "Oh." And I I remember being like, "Oh, I've blacked out." Like mm-hmm. I don't I don't remember I remember we were at the concert and then we're back now. Right. A couple hours have gone by. So that was kind of, you know, a scary feeling to have. And then I was like, you know, let's do it again. You know, so, (laughs) (laughs) so, so you did it again. Well, I just kept doing it. Uh, I didn't take it like that night. I remember you have like the panic of like what happened. Blacking out is terrifying kind of feeling. Yeah, oh, it's awful. So And people are filling you in on what you did and your life in that two hours. Yeah. It's scary shit. So this was this was one that this was a this was a good warning I should have paid attention to. The first one? No, the second <laughs> one. <laughs> and none of the warnings about these guys going, hey, pay attention to your doses. He had a lot of warnings. This was a real warning. I was in uh <laughs> it was senior prom. I go to prom and we're all I remember I went to prom with a girl. I got invited to go to a, a different school's prom from a girl the year before. And I remember they were like, they were good, good girls. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we're going to go and like watch a movie. And then we're going to like, <laughs> like fucking do, you know, artwork or something <laughs> like make, po- I was like, what? And they're like, what do you want? I was like, drugs. Yeah. Drink. The fuck are you talking about? And I realized like they were just like good, wholesome kids. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you guys are such fucking losers. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to black out and forget we ever had this I conversation. Feel, oh, man. I, I feel like I um, I met one of their mothers, and I feel like she knew. Like, she looked at me, and she was like, are you going to go over to, like, the, the lemonade party after this? I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she looked at me like, I know what you want to do. <laughs> but anyways... <laughs> So we're at we're at prom with my date and like all the kids that party are like we're going to this house then this house this house has all the booze this house has the weed and blah 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 so I'm like all right so we leave the like the, the official party the, the official prom party we go to the house party house party and then I I get a hotel room I take the girl I'm with to the hotel and she had done it a couple times. And I remember I I picked her up and her mom or her dad was like, have her home by like, let's say two. So I'm like, all right, we go to the hotel. We're, we've been drinking. We do GHB. We're messing, we're screwing around. And then dude, we black out. 
Both of you. Both of us. That's, that is scary because we come to, and I'm like, you know, I know that I've been out, and uh, thank God she's okay, but it's now like three. Oh, shit. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. And we're both, we both had blacked out. So I remember this, this also keyed me in on something else. I, I take her home and I remember that I was, I was super embarrassed that I had, <laughs> I had over, you know, stayed the time I was supposed to drop her off. So I was like, just get in there. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even walking I was like, your I'm not walking up. your ass yeah, up I'm a there. slow roll by your driveway, <laughs> yeah. girl. Hop yeah. out real quick. <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> And like you as she got out of the car, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> her her mom called me the next day. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, she called me and she gave me shit about that. I remember she was like, "You didn't even walk her up to that." I was like, "Cause you thought you were mad." So she was like, "I am." <laughs> <laughs> it was embarrassing. <laughs> but here's dude. This so we is a small school in a small community. I made sure to have a cover story about where we were. So we were, I was like, we should just like, we can't tell people we're in fucking hotel, you know, doing drugs and fucking, <laughs> yeah. like, it's a crazy thing to tell people. So like, just say that we were at the beach because the beach seems like a little more innocent yeah. and like, you know, like people make out at the beach. It's fine. It's not as, so we, we told uh, right away, where were you? We were at the beach. We were at the beach. We started telling everybody. The next week, the like vice principal of the school calls me in, like the dean of students, whatever he's called, calls me in and he's like, I know what happened last weekend. I'm like, fuck, what? He goes, I know. And I'm like, how do you know? He's like, don't worry about how I know. I know that you were at the beach. I was like, what? But it told me that somebody like in our circle was telling school administrators yeah, to the top. Yeah. And he was like, and I know what you, I know you're taking shit. I know you guys are fucking around. Yeah. And I was like, really? He's like, just knock it off now. And I was like, all right, man. And he was like, I'm trying not to go to the beach again. Like, he tried to, like, <laughs> he left me with like a movie villain yeah, line, yeah. you know? He's like, I'll see I'll you, at watching the beach. you at the beach. <laughs> yeah, I was like, right. okay. But that means that like one of our friends. Yep. Had inner actually, circle. Yeah. Was telling the top. The top people. And what are they getting out of it though? I have no idea. Right? Yeah, I have no idea. And then that was, uh, so that would have been like, let's say May. The second blackout. The second blackout was like May. That's when prom, prom probably yeah. is. Yeah. We graduate in June. And then Thanksgiving break, freshman year of college is when I OD. Damn. Yeah. Two nights after Thanksgiving. And then you, so I know you told the whole story. You got to go see that on uh, It's on comedy. YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called This Is Not Happening. It's before they did uh, the series though, wasn't it? It was just That's for the digital. internet. Yeah. 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 Um, so you told me you, you <laughs> You woke up to a priest in your room. Well, I woke up to my, one of my neighbors. One of my my one of my classmates' mother is a, was a doctor. Oh, she found you? No, but she oh. was like working the hospital that oh, night. Oh, I see. Okay. So they just she didn't actually work on me. They were like just put a familiar face in front of him. Mm -hmm. So so when I came to, I'm looking at like ceiling lights, and then she leans into frame, and she was like, I was like. Arr. Like doctor, you know, so I, I, I recognize her, but I'm also all tubed up and, and restrained. And oh, they had you strapped they down? They had you strapped because you'll try to pull the tubes out. Yeah. And she was like, I remember she was like, hey, it's me. You're at the hospital and you overdosed. She goes, you overdosed on drugs. That's what she said. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then, and then it was my parents. Then they like leaned in the frame and I was like, oh. cause I was in my head. I was like, I wonder if they know. <laughs> And they had a vigil going on? There's a candlelight vigil. <laughs> in the room or not like in the room, separate in room? In the separate <laughs> area. <laughs> and people were lighting candles. Yeah, they come in yeah. to light candles and pray. And they're like, he's going to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you wake up to that, you're, you're so close to I the other like, side, oh, dude. Oh, shit. I mean, I was like, I remember just closing my eyes, being like, can this, can this go away? <laughs> like, is this a dream? I thought it was a dream for a second. You yeah. Know? Yeah, because it's like it's so bad, you know. It's like somebody, it's, it's like somebody being like, 
you're going to have to go to prison for a while. You're like, what? what? Yeah, it's like, that's that's how, dude, I remember that, I mean, I, I come to, they kind of ask me questions. I'm also vomiting the whole time with tubes in because Ooh. they're they're pumping liquid charcoal into your stomach because that does something where it like makes the whatever chemicals Absorbs up, it and then and you can't digest it so you vomit oh, so I it's see. like a, a thing that gotcha. yeah and all the blood vessels in my eyes have ruptured so they're all red damn the red not just the whites of my eye but all around here everything ruptured because you're you're vo vomiting so violently right so like you're just puke and puking and then a couple of days later they they moved me from whatever that's like the emergency then to ICU and then to like a regular I'm in the hospital like five six days damn uh, <laughs> there's little things you remember I remember my dad when I was home he's like I'm glad you know you're okay and I was like yeah he's like that was you know this and that and I go yeah and then he's like you know how much that hospital stay cost me and I was like what <laughs> He's running a number. Yeah, by he's it. like he was like <laughs> like twenty two grand. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, and then I'd be like, I'm sorry. He's like, oh, that's not that's not why I said it. I'm like, why? What do you? <laughs> Why'd you say yeah. that? Yeah. And he's like, just want you to know. I'm like, that I cost you <laughs> some money. Twenty two thousand dollars. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Let's take a quick break to tell you about our sponsor, Omax CryoFreeze. Whether you're an athlete, a weekend warrior, or someone who deals with constant joint pain, back pain, muscle soreness, or arthritis, finding a natural remedy that instantly works might seem non-existent. Most over-the-counter pain relievers such as Icy Hot and Bengay only focus on one basic cooling effect such as menthol, which temporarily takes your mind off the pain until that pain returns in an hour or so. If you're looking to get rid of nagging muscle and joint pain immediately while providing long-lasting recovery, then you need to try the natural breakthrough pain relief solution, CryoFreeze CBD, developed by Omax Health. This non-prescription triple action pain relief roll-on is specially formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. The best part is this 100% natural CBD powered remedy works its magic within 10 minutes of application and relief lasts up to eight hours, which is much longer than the over-the-counter products. It's super easy to throw in your gym bag and take on the go for emergency pain relief. Simply roll it over where it hurts and ice out the pain with an Arctic blast. So if you're looking to relieve your muscle and joint pain within 15 minutes and need a natural yet powerful solution as tested and works, try CryoFreeze Pain Relief Roll-On. This quick absorbing scientifically backed formula provides pain relief instantly. And if pro athletes use it, well, it must work. Remember, go to omaxhealth.com today and enter code HONEYDEW to take advantage of this incredible savings. That's O-M-A-X health.com and enter code HONEYDEW and you'll get 20% off cryofreeze and site-wide. Don't let muscle soreness continue to be an excuse for living an active lifestyle. Go to omaxhealth.com and feel relief faster. Now let's get back to the do. All right, cool. so what, is there any like court ordered rehab? Is there any mandated no. rehab? So what my happens? parents, uh, you, you know, in their, in their defense. just let it go. No, no, in their defense, look, my parents are doing the best they can. And they're, they're just, you know, when like we are, party kids i would say like my my sisters and i like that's what what ends up we end up being like we're, mm -hmm. we go to parties and we're drinking and doing yeah. and they're not that type they're like more squares they're just more clean cut you know like so they don't even know to look for it or think they don't about know it shit or, about yeah. that i feel like they're they're basically like for this for the purpose of the conversation innocence they don't know right so they're like I'm, I've been at a, I've been in, I was supposed to be back in college. Now I'm, I was in the hospital now I'm out and it's like, I'm recovering and it's like, well, it's time to go back to school. And my parents were like, we can't send this fucking kid back to school. He just OD'd right. like he's going to fucking, we're just sending him to die. And they feel like, you know, if they do just send me back, if something happens, how could they ever live with them? Yeah, of course. And I, you know, I get it more now, right? You're just like, they, they're going like, we have to do something. So they send me to a drug rehab facility uh, in, I think it's in Lauderdale, like one of the really good ones. Is it overnight? You're staying overnight? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. To be, 
evaluated. Yeah. And I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. And they're like, no, you got, you got to go. Like we well, have, I would want to know why I would want to know. You would want to know if that's your kid. Now you see that, like, of course. what the fuck's going on with my son? And I go, what am I like? What Eating am I supposed GHB to do? They're like, you're going to get evaluated. It's a three day evaluation. So you go and you get there and you're paired up with someone. Oh, you do have a, that's what's going to ask you have, you have to. a roommate. Oh, you have a roommate. So I'm paired up with this guy. And I remember, remember his name? I don't remember his name, but I remember his, um, <laughs> I remember, he was there for, what was he, yeah, there? <laughs> he was an alcoholic <laughs> and his thing was, he was drinking over a fifth of gin a day, a day, a day, every day, every day. Man. And I was like, the human I, body can dude, take some you shit. Seen, I'm in bed and he, I go, so what is he's like, he's like booze, you know, alcohol. And I was like, but like, what were you doing? He starts to tell me. He goes, yeah, I was drinking like over a fifth of gin. I go, Jesus Christ, man, you're fucking, you're fucked up. Like, I was, I'm <laughs> you're like, in there next yeah, to him. Yeah, I'm next to him. And I'm like. Uh, I just woke up to a candlelight vigil, man. You're fucking, you're a piece of shit. I'm, I'm 18. Everybody in there, everybody uh, okay, yeah. is older than me. Oh, really? Yeah. They're everyone. not in, co I'm thinking high school, college. No, kids. no, no. Oh, They're all adults. Adults and, adults. and it's like mostly men. And there's group in the beginning of the day. And I'm like, they're like, oh, so they all introduce themselves. How big? How many people are we talking about? I would say 20, the, 50, yeah, like 20. Yeah. You know, everyone's like, hey, I'm Gary and uh, I'm an I'm an alcoholic. And everybody's like, hi, Gary. Or I'm, you know, Kevin and I'm a drug addict. I think they would say, what did they say? Just an addict? Or? Yeah, something like that. And then they got to me. I was like, I'm Tom. I'm just doing an evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> the value I'm here. Bro. Yeah. I was like, I'm not saying that shit. And they were like, oh, don't say it till you're ready. I'm like, I'm not going to be ready. <laughs> I go, I partied. I partied too hard. I'm here. I got to get the fuck out of here. Like, let's wrap it up. So they're, they're doing like, they're, you know, everyone's telling, this dude is telling a story about selling his body for crack. Oh and he's like, and, and, and sleeping in a dumpster, sleeping in an alleyway. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, you know how sometimes when you run out of weed, you're like, uh, is there anything else I can take? <laughs> like, I'm like, you guys have real problems. <laughs> I mean, that guy was like, get, get him the fuck out of here. These guys. Yeah. So one guy, I get through telling them, I'm like, I really don't have anything wrong with me. I just fucking partied. And this guy's like, I want to say something to Tom. I still remember him. He, I go, okay. He goes, I think, you know, you're trying to minimize some of the things that, uh, like you've been doing and you know, you actually are kind of diminishing the, the roles that the role that like these drugs and everything have in your life. And I was like, you don't know what you're talking about at all. So <laughs> they're, they're like, how can we help this guy? I was like, <laughs> I was like, it's a fucking evaluation. So. I'm doing this because my parents won't let me go back to school. And then I'm sitting with, so there's counselors that are working, mm -hmm. like they're, you're at, they're, they're hired by the facility. And then there's like the ones that are more like volunteers. You know what I mean? Where they, they've been there, they've been sober 10 years and part of their sobriety is to uh, come to the place and talk to people that are like newly in, in this facility. Mm -hmm. This guy pulls me aside. The welcome, uh, fucking community coming to see you. He, he pulls me aside that he, he, he's, he's like 10 years sober. I used to fucking shoot heroin into my neck. And, uh, he's like, Hey man, come here. I go, okay. What? Well, he goes, he goes, if you can just, if you can stay cool with weed and booze, you're cool. Don't tell him what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, the rehab at the facility. rehab facility <laughs> uh, great. another guy Don't tell him tell, another guy tells me this the same thing in an in an office he pulls me in the office he goes if you can stay chill with weed you're, you're fine and i was like okay because they start at they're like what have you done and i'm like dude i've done i've drank like in high school and college smoked weed and they're like, do you ever take, you know, they started like, do you ever take ecstasy? And I'm like, yeah, once I took it at a fucking party. It didn't do anything. And then I took this shit because it did something. And they'd be like, that's another thing right there. <laughs> like, I was like, hey, God damn, yeah, I, was, I don't know what to say. 
then I start, <laughs> here's the thing. I was the, I was the worst guy in the facility because you know, I, yeah, I could talk to people. So I would, I would see a guy getting coffee. I go, I go, Hey, so, uh, I missed it. Like, what'd you say? What was your thing? When you, you were, you were saying, he's like, Oh, I, I used to love, uh, I was a, a cocaine addict. I go, that's gotta be fucking awesome. Huh? Like, awesome. yeah, I was like, he's in a I was like doing Coke's gotta be wild. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> I remember he goes, you gotta be careful how you, uh, react to people's stories. But, but I, and I, 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 go, <laughs> I go, <laughs> I, the shit I go, but him. I want to know what it's like to be like on Coke and heroin. God, you're, you're getting their drug all riled up in his body. Yeah. He goes, what you're doing right now is yeah. it's yeah. called, <laughs> It's called getting me high. Yeah. <laughs> it's called I need some coke. No, I remember the phrase. It's called romancing the drug. <laughs> and I was like, what? He goes, when you talk about it in these terms that you keep talking about, like how it must be great. <laughs> he goes, you're it, ro it's, you're romance, it's romancing. Uh, you're romancing the drug so that like somebody like me starts who to go loves it. who loves it goes oh it is awesome <laughs> instead of you know just i don't want that a part of my life i was like oh yeah i'm not an addict so i don't think like you um, but you said you missed ghb you said i miss it no i was like you know that was fun I but if you could let me ask you this if there was no uh repercussions that nothing serious if, if the re repercussions of ghb were that of weed let's say you yeah know, it just fades or whatever you don't black out or whatever yep. would you would you do it i mean if this is it right here <laughs> And it's instant. But I'll tell you this. It's instant. <laughs> it's instant. Yeah, it would be like five, four, three. I'd be like, oh, yeah, man, it's great. There it is. But I haven't done it. Look, I, I remember I um, that guy told me, he's like, you, uh, like the, uh, there was like the, it's like a movie cast. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the counselors was the stern counselor. And he was like, well, we did this evaluation and we find that you have a strong uh, propensity for chemical dependency and I was like okay so you mean that like because I had this overdose this uh, unintentional over like where I just took too much now I'm an addict and he was like well my evaluation would be that you you most likely are and I was like okay and I just left there I don't know. I never did anything again except weed, you know, like right. I, I didn't drink for a year. I was, here's the thing. When that happens to you, there's only one of two ways you're probably going to be. You're either going to be like, fuck it. I don't give a shit. And like, just right away. Or like you're terrified and you go, I just don't want to take anything. Right. Because it's such a scary experience. Yeah, I'll bet. So I didn't, I didn't even touch a sip of alcohol for about a year. And then... I would say about six months after that. So a year and a half later, I was like, I could smoke weed. Like that's how long it just was a traumatizing experience. Smoked weed. That's it. I finished college with like smoking weed and drinking, you know, beer, whiskey, whatever. And then in, you know, after college, same thing. I don't know. It's been 20 years. And yeah. I, and I, the most that I've done is like, had a few drinks, smoked weed, or eaten a fucking Joey Diaz edible that makes me feel like I'm gonna he die. He just told me about that, by the way. He just says, how's Tommy doing? He said he gave you an edible on the plane and had to give you something to bring it down. He He's said. such an asshole. That's what he said. He, he also did that, about it, he, he did it to Mike Cronin, <laughs> who was opening, who just met him. He's like, hey, I'm Mike, nice to meet you. He's like, try one of these. And how much is it? And you know what Mike said? This is like two days later. Mike calls me. He goes, I keep having flashbacks. <laughs> flashbacks. He, he goes, to the moment. He goes, the moment that I put that thing in my mouth and swallowed. He goes, Joey was talking to somebody. And then he looked at me and he laughed maniacally. Like he just went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and Mike was like, that was weird. Like he had, he didn't put it together in the moment. He goes, I just remember that Joey looked at me and just started like, dude. Mike, it hit Mike after me. So I was fucked up and Mike was, Mike called me. He goes, I thought you were just a lightweight. Cause yeah, you're was, on the plane when this is happening. No, oh. I'm, I'm with Joey. I would freak out if I was in the First air. First of all, I, think I would freak out. I'm, I'm just like, I'm at the club. 
he fucking robbed me of a night. Two days, really. Two days. Yeah. <laughs> but he, when I took it, because I asked him, I go, what, I go, I don't want, I, I like mild edibles. Mm-hmm. It's what I like. I like it. It's like having a couple drinks. I have a, a buzz. I can enjoy myself. It's fun. He's like, that's what that is. And I'm like, why would you have right, a mild, mild ed- one? Yeah. So he pops four and he goes, well, I'm like, oh, maybe it is. Like he's taking four of them. How, you know, that would make sense. He's given me, one time I was with him in Vegas and he gave me 20. He had a 20 milligram pill and I saw the package and I was like, oh, so he ha- he does fuck with things that aren't. A hundred million. Right. And and I remember with the 20, I took a 20 and he was like, and popped like four in his mouth. So with these, he does the same thing. I'm like, oh, maybe it is a mild edible. Take it, you know, hour and a half later, I'm like, I mean, I'm. Do you remember how many milligram it is? Do you know? All we know is that it was at least a (laughs) hundred and that it was dipped in hash oil. Oh my God. That, That is absurd. Yeah. That's something you do if but you're home he, on the couch he took, trying to he run took from four. something. Yeah. He, he took, took four, four of those. He one. took them before he went on stage. And he was like, I started to have a panic attack on stage. And I was like, what do you do? He's like, that's part of the fucking, that's the game. You know? like, <laughs> you're crazy, yeah, dude. Yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he goes, all you got to do is take a Xanax. Nobody knows nothing. I was like, what are you talking about, man? Like, that's what he's like, come down. When you when you go too far, you take a Xanax, like you balance it out. I'm like, this is a fucking danger. I don't know. This game, I don't like it. I was high, I was out of my mind for six, seven hours. Out of Damn, my mind. that long? Oh, my eyes were pulsating, yeah. body vibrating. I was asking what words are. And like, <laughs> like, uh, and like, why are we here if it isn't to express love? Like shit like that, yeah. you know, just being crazy. And where is he taking you? Where are you going with him while he's doing it? Where I'm at his show at the Improv and then we're on a plane. We're so are you home. fucked up on the plane still? Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm out of my mind. So I fucking sleep for most of the flight. I get I get off the plane. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm less high, but I know I'm fucked up. I go home. I, I nap some. I get up. And I when I get up, it's, uh, you know, it's like it's, let's say it's noon. And I'm like, oh, I'm fully, I'm high. I'm not like kind of high. I'm really high right now. The rest of the day high. Really? Yes. And then when I go to bed, I feel like a, a high is coming down. And the next day, I realize I'm not high, but I feel like I'm spent, like drained. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm hung over from. Yeah. That's when Mike, when I first finally talked to Mike, he's like, I slept on a hotel bathroom floor. <laughs> that's, not, that's passing out. Dude, no, he was, like, he was like, I was so scared. And he's like, I thought I was going to throw up. And then he goes, I kept having intrusive thoughts like, don't jump off the balcony. Dude, that's the shit that scares me when yeah. I start. Yeah, don't do it. Just don't. don't when you have to start telling yourself. Yeah, don't do he's it. like, don't, don't jump, jump off the this. balcony. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And he said he drove from Miami where we did it to his parents' place. And that as soon as he got there, his mom was like, let's have dinner. And he was like, all right. And he was, you know, fucked up. And that he was, <laughs> he was in his head. So he ate dinner with them. Like, it was very quiet. And then. <laughs> His mother, he went to his room. His mother texted him, is everything all right? Do you want to talk? You seem upset. And he's like, oh, because he's just <laughs> trying to get away, you know? <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but don't do GHB. I would say that. I'm not, I mean, look, drugs scare me. I've, I have tried ecstasy, and like you, it didn't work for me the first I, two times. did nothing. And, and the then, third time? And then the third time... I mean, I felt my face grow ear to ear, and I was like, oh, this. I was in Vegas sitting at a, a roulette table, and the girl I was seeing at the time, we both took it at the same time. She had just got up to go to the restroom. Yep. And when she walked away, I started hearing, ding, 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 like all the chiming yeah. and everything. And I was like, oh, here we go. This is what the fuck everybody's talking about. You're one of the people I don't get it how edibles don't affect you. Well, I, I'll say this, this. Work? I would say a hundred or 200 would definitely affect me. The problem is I have to find, I don't know what that range is. I'll take 50 and it'll do nothing. To nothing. Me. Nothing. 
Nothing. I've taken Joey Stars of Death before. Oh, wait, that's a thousand. He thought I threw it away one time, called me out on it. And then he, when he came to do the Crab Feast back in the day when we were at the Raleigh Studios, you remember when yeah. ATC was back there? He had come early. He goes, uh, I said, we'll smoke before we go. He goes, fuck, dog, you're going to eat a star of death, dog. You're going to eat a star of death. Do it in front of me. And I said, okay. I chew it all up in front of him. And then we small talk and we have a smoke. I forget I take the fucking thing because it does nothing to me. And then afterwards, like a like a really depressed, disappointed, like, it's, it's a shame those things don't do anything to you. I go, yeah, I don't know. I said, I'm sure if I took two, it would probably make me think I need to be in the fucking hospital. But that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what, So will no that, that will that me. happen to you? I'm sure, oh. yeah. I, it's, edibles have worked on me before to the point where the only time they've really worked was when um, back in the day, a buddy of mine one night baked. He just took the weed and didn't didn't melt it in the butter or anything. I'm talking, he crumbled it up and just put it straight into the brownies, just straight weed in the brownies and baked it like that. And I ate a full fucking brownie and I could feel every fucking follicle yeah. on my scalp. Yeah. A scalp, I just said. Scalp. <laughs> I'm still feeling it on that's the you're real skull, high. You know you're that's skull. That's why. Yeah. Why isn't it called a skull? But your goddamn sca- a it's, skull. It's yeah. a scout, motherfucker. Uh, but I could feel it, and he's like, "Now we're going to the strip club," and I was like, "Oh!" And I had a blast. Oh, you did? Yeah, because the the grind, the, the the touching and everything felt like a, a light ecstasy almost. You know what yeah. I mean? Like not nothing. Super well, if intense, I'm but. super high on it, like if it wrecks me, I can't go somewhere. You know what I mean? Like I'm. Uh, I, I'm just too anxious. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, oh my God, my phone was going to die. Dude, I'm a drug scare me. I've never done cocaine. I've I never, think, never I do acid. think that if that hadn't happened to me, I know I would have tried more things, you know? So what was your evaluation? What did they end up saying? What, that, what he said? said? He was Nothing. like, he's like, I think you, you have a, that was it. And yeah. then they let you go. Though. Oh, well, yeah. Because it was an evaluation. And then I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Then I go back home. Would that run your dad? How much? Oh, he told me that too. <laughs> I was going to say, all in. Dude, what? he told me that way. Like, <laughs> he with the he's, price like, back. he's like, you know what that just cost me? Like on the way back yeah. to the house, I'm like, no. It's like $12,000. <laughs> I was like, cool. <laughs> and then I'm just sitting there like, <clears throat> I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I'm like, sorry about that. He's like, it's all right. Just, you know, 12 grand. Just letting you know, yeah. 30, 34,000 dollars in. All together, your little game. <laughs> your game. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Your fun night. Your fun night cost me uh, 33,000 um, dollars. Yeah, so there was, there was, then I get back to the house with my parents and I'm like, so, like, what do you, what do you want to do? I mean, I'm re- I want to go back to school. So they sent me back to school and, uh, you know. And nothing, you were good to go. Yeah, they were just like, please don't fucking die. Yeah, yeah, don't make us feel like shit by dying. I was like, all right. It, it scared me. It scared me enough to not fuck around. Yeah, I mean, hospitals are especially. That's the same reason I don't drink that much anymore. I got jumped, and that was it. When Where'd I, you get jumped? In Irvine. I, I got wasted at a Eagles concert way back when I was t- like twenty. I, I drank a bunch of you wine. You got jumped? Yeah, I, I. I've told the story before. It's a longer story, but I'll, I'll sum it up. I thought I told you. I'm sure you probably know this, though. But we went to my buddy Kevin and his brother Rick, Rick's girlfriend, and I go see Eagles Hell Freezes Over tour down at the Irvine Amphitheater back in the day. Right, right there on the other side of the Irvine Improv. Remember the mm-hmm. big Ferris wheel over there on the fairgrounds? And um, we're drinking beer. And we run, we finish our beer, we smoke our weed, and then we have nothing. And Rick and his girlfriend are, have brought wine. And this is when I learned about wine. This is when I realized, oh, you don't drink wine like you drink beer. Right. But we were drinking the wine. Yeah. After calling him a pussy for a while and, you know, yeah. for bringing wine to a fucking Eagles. Right, grape concert. juice, man. Yeah, oh, and then yeah. we started drinking it like that. Sure. And I blacked out through the whole entire show. I woke up to hear... Joe Walsh's little Funk 49 in like uh, Hotel California at the end and then done and out. We walk out and Rick had a old school Toyota Land Cruiser. Remember those? And, and the seats in the back didn't face the windshield. They faced each other. And the last thing, and it's open. It's summer and it's hot and Kevin and I are waste. I mean, we are slumped over. I can't talk. I can't move. You're so fucked up. I've said nothing to any. I haven't made eye contact with anyone. I haven't said a word to anyone. I'm just a sitting duck. And the last thing I remember is Rick saying, watch out, these guys look like they want trouble or these look like they want to fight or something along those lines of they look like trouble. 
And then I literally woke up in a hospital and the whole two hours had to be filled in to me by police reports, doctors, I definitely didn't nurses. Know yeah. And, um, so two dudes had walked up, I guess they were amateur boxers apparently that comes out later. So they were skilled. Uh, and one of them grabbed Kevin and one of them grabbed me and then just pulled us out of the back of the Jeep, like a scuba diver goes over yeah. the boat, you know, and I hit my head I, uh, fracture, uh, my skull. I crush, I cracked my skull and then he proceeds to kick my jaw and break it. So I, now I have TMJ from the fracture in my jaw. Anytime I get a hangover, by the way, I don't get it in my head. I get it in my fucking jaw. What? This is where my hangover is. So this right dude here. just, just, they were wasted and they were just wanting to, they were walking through, you know, beating on cars. Oh and yeah. Shit. You know, we're all bumper to bump. There were those guys. Yeah. And we were in an uncovered, unprotected, uh, car and I couldn't protect myself. I was wasted and I wake up in the hospital and that's when they tell me, um, well, we took you here in an ambulance. We had to give you oxygen. Uh, the car behind you pulled over you started to pull cause they didn't see you. And then all these witnesses came out to fucking defend us and everything. And the police didn't give a shit. They didn't care. They were just like, whatever. These are drunk assholes at a concert. We don't care. I get to the hospital and I'm laying in the, in the bed. And I remember waking up freezing and the nurse put those, you know, those nice warm hospital blankets on you. And she had some ginger ale and she was a little straw. And she goes, just take a sip. Do not gulp it. But I was just the so fucking thirsty and I just downed it. And then I threw up everywhere. And she's like, listen, you have a major concussion, blah, blah, blah. I black back out. I wake up. The doctor's giving me stitches. He tells me he can't Holy give me shit. anesthesia. He's just sewing my head up. And he's like, how much you've had to drink tonight? I'm like, nothing. You know, saying that dumb yeah, shit. He's yeah. like, okay, yeah, nothing. Yeah. And um, This is down in Irvine? Yeah, I'm in the hospital. Dude, I cannot, I cannot believe I've known you this whole time. I don't. I, don't um, I can't believe you don't know this one. Yeah, I'm in the hospital there. I, and then I, I, as I come to him, my bed a little bit, I see Kevin walk by, but he looks fucked up. So I, like you, I think I'm dreaming. I don't. Yeah. know that any of this is real i didn't feel these stitches in my fucking head is your jaw wired shut well i don't point? even know what it looks like at this point i don't know it's broken yet i finally after a few hours i'm able to get up walk myself to the restroom and pee and when i look in the mirror my face is out like this and i'm like <gasps> and that's visually when it hit me like oh my god oh, yeah. and they're up. like listen you're lucky you're not dead you went you know, you went straight on your fucking, your, your skull. You went straight down, fractured that, fractured your face. Um, and then we're still drunk. We're still so drunk. So <laughs> they let us out of the hospital and they're like, you guys, and this is what's really fucked up. No one. And if they did, I don't remember it. No one said, don't go to sleep. No one said anything about a concussion. These cops tell us that we're still fucked up, that we need to sleep it off. So we go right from the hospital to a hotel. We get two queen beds. Rick and his girlfriend sleep peacefully. This is like, you know, in the morning at this yeah, point now. Yeah. And Kevin and I are in just excruciating pain, laying side by side in our full clothes. And we just, we can't sleep. Now we got to get in the back of this old ass Toyota Land Cruiser and drive up all the way back up that fucking 405 and five. Just, you know, it's, oh, oh, I'm going to, oh, you're, I'm going to be sick oh, oh, listening yeah. to this story. Oh, yeah. Like my, the pain, everything. I'm hung over the pain. We get back, the police call. Um, and Rick's girlfriend at the time was this little cute Beverly Hills girl. She had a cell phone. This is 97, no, 94. This is 94 when I first came here to go to college. I'm 20 years old. And um, they get on the phone like, you're going to give us some more attitude? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, you gave us so much attitude. I'm like, your police report says I was knocked unconscious. How would I give you any attitude? I don't understand any of that. And they just were dicks. They didn't want to do anything to help us. Kevin's dad tried to file up. That's how he started finding out who these people were. Like all these, they didn't give a fuck. So um, I go back and I'm at, I'm, I'm at Cal State Northridge at the time. I call my brother. I'm living in this little studio. I go to sleep. I wake up. I call my younger brother and I tell him the whole, this whole fucking story I've told you, which I've told before on here. And he goes, are you serious? I go, yeah, man, you believe me? He goes, no, I mean, are you serious? I go, what are you talking about? He goes, you just called me like two hours ago and told me this exact story word for word. And I had no recollection of that. Like for three months when I would lay down the bench press and work out, I would get massive dizzy spells where I would almost throw up and feel like I was sliding off the bench. I kept going to doctors like, listen, you had 
a serious concussion, and that's going to be a minute. And they before. never got the guys? No, never. So they have no so I got this bump here and this I fucking permanent click in my Fuck, motherfucking man. jaw. That story's horrible. So that's why I don't – I mean, I'll, I have no problem having half a fucking beer and leaving. Like, it, yeah, there's it's, only, a, it's a traumatic event. Yeah, and there's only been a couple times I've allowed myself to be that vulnerable – Mm-hmm. after drinking or doing drugs, but usually it's at home yeah. where I can fall into my fucking bed yeah, or something yeah. like that. I don't ever get like that in public. That is yeah, that was nuts. That's, horrible That's story. what changed it for me, yeah. Yeah. That's when I was like, weed's my friend and fuck wine. Um, do we have time for the football game? Do you have time for it? Yeah. Can we do it? And then we'll finish up with advice to your... I feel like I may... I didn't tell us on here. I don't know if I did. Did I not? Uh, what, I know I've told this story before. But I don't know if I told it here. I, th- I mean, I just remember what happened. So we were playing uh, the eventual state champions in uh, Florida. Yeah, uh, that w- that were in our classification, and they uh, they came they came to our school and they fucked us up. They were from Bell Glade, which is like in Palm Beach County, but going inland, mm-hmm. sugarcane country. So it's like real blue collar, like they're farm worker kind of place. And there's three schools in that area. All three schools are different classifications and all have multiple state championships. In Damn. Imagine like one, you know, 10 mile, square mile kind of place and there's three high schools and they're all state champions. Right. Glades Day, Glades Central, and Pahokee. And, and they they've- all, battle each other every year for state championships. Well, no, because they're they're actually in different classifications. Oh, okay. So they will. Oh, I see. Yeah, they, there's a two of the schools will play each other pretty regularly, and that'll be a they call it Muck City, but like you know, Santonio Holmes and Quan Bolt, they're all from. Oh, that they're area. out of there. They're okay. all out of that area. So we're playing one of those schools, and uh, they come in and like we. I remember that like it's my junior year, and that on one of the first drives, they're like, "What's up, faggots?" Like, <laughs> like we're like, "What." Like at the line of scrimmage. At the line of yeah. scrimmage. Yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> and and then they're saying super racist shit to the, like I have a black guy on the, to my left and to my right, and they're saying crazy racist shit at the line of scrimmage. And they have black guys on their team that are right there, and I'm like. It's saying like, nothing. And, but here's the thing. It has the effect that you want it to have if you're evaluating that which is that like we're all stunned yeah like we're we're huddling up we're like did you fucking hear that <laughs> clocks ticking yeah. And, shit. yeah and and then like like they're looking at me like did you hear that I'm like yeah I fucking heard that it was crazy <laughs> like what the fuck is that and then it's like and they had hut and you're like oh my god like 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 it was like that we were like holy shit they just come they come down the first drive i just the the first possession they just fucking march down the field boom and we're like oh shit shit like it was so easy and they're just trucking us talking shit like we never i don't feel like we'd heard i mean trash talk like that where you're like man they're so confident and they're so good and they're so physical and they're saying crazy shit to us um we're just stunned i just i remember that i remember we're just like like when you look at your teammate and you can just see in their eyes that like you know <laughs> it's gonna be a yeah. long day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I remember that like I, I even remember like coaches. Like we had one coach who played in the NFL, like temporarily, but like, you know, he's like that guy, right? Big guy, and we all loved him. And I just remember like him looking at us like, You guys, you're you're out of your league right now. Like he, you know what I mean? Like he was like almost dis- disappointed. I'm like he was like, Do you guys have any balls? You guys gonna just let these guys fucking do this to you? And we were kind of like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> like, I don't think we have a choice. I don't think yet. this is we're gonna win this one. And so they're just they're just massacring us, right? And I remember I'm, I'm on a punt coverage. I, I'm the long snapper, so I snap the ball. And you basically, you know, you block for a moment, you hear the punt, and then you just, you know, you cover it. You just pick a lane. You kind of go down. So I'm running down and I hear the whistle of the play being over. And when you're on punt coverage, you're obviously you're running a full sprint and then you kind of slow down, right? And you're, 
your wind down might be 20 yards. Mm -hmm. So as I'm going from the full sprint whistle winding down, a guy just takes my legs out. Oh, he went under you. He went under me. I never saw it. Right. So I must have been like, there's the whistle turn boom, like that. And I just remember I was I was conscious of it. But I remember I'm being I'm up in the air parallel to the ground. And landing on my tailbone. Oh shit! And it's still throughout, if like going over the course of my life. If you go like, what's the most physically painful thing that you can recall? That would be number one or two. That was it that was hit. it was that. And it wasn't like it wasn't the same as getting like trucked, or you know what I mean. Like mm. you can you can like shoot a gap and then have a fullback blow you up. That's a different type of force. This was like. It was the blindsidedness of the hit, but also the impact of your tailbone, like yeah. not knowing, like I can't even duplicate, I don't think I could duplicate what it's like to go through that. But as it hit, I remember just being in incredible pain because you're like, you don't know what, what's, what exactly happened at first. Cause also it came out of nowhere. I just remember the trainer coming up onto the field and I'm laying there and she's like, don't move. And then she's like, uh, can you feel this? And I go, feel what? And when I said that, she just like snapped. She was like, <laughs> she was like, get the cart, get the cart, <laughs> dude. Let me tell you what they do. She's like, I'm stabbing time. your leg with scissors. You don't yeah. feel that. She no, was like, feel that. she was like, uh, we got to take him to the hospital. I go, no, no, I don't need to go to the hospital. They're <clears> like, you have to, you have a lower back injury. You know, you, we can't risk it, <laughs> but here's the thing. Like it's embarrassing. To ha I'm like, cause I feel like, and look, expensive it's not for your dad. Oh, my dad's about, to, <laughs> my dad's going to chime yeah, in pretty soon. Yeah. He is actually not at this game, but you know who is at this game? My mother who doesn't understand football and doesn't go to games. Somebody had like been like, you should go to this game. <laughs> and this is the one she this goes to. Game. No. And then here's the thing. If you ever go to a, like a high school game or whatever. And, and even if you're like, I think I broke my finger. Uh, we need to go you know, have it reset or whatever, they will still turn on the lights of the ambulance and make it a whole production. Yeah. So they do that. So I'm like standing there and they're like, Oh, you're, you're standing. You're I'm standing. Yeah. I'm standing at this point. I'm, I know that like at the very least, I mean, I, I fucking hurt myself, but I'm like, I'm, I, I'm fine. They're like, you have to go to the hospital. So I'm like, all right. And then they're like, here, like, we're going to get out the stretcher. I'm like, I don't, I can just get on. They're like, we can't like, there's a, you know, hospital protocol. You got to follow proto man. So they put me on the stretcher. Oh, yes. Man, God. And then they, they're like, whoop, whoop. Like turn yeah. on. All, I'm like, <laughs> do they strap you down? And yeah. Shit too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks, it looks terrible. And I'm though. just like looking, I mean, here's the thing is that like, I'm laying down and I just, look over at my teammates. I'm like, I'm going to go die now, guys. Like, <laughs> What's your mom doing? Is she freaking out? Yeah, somebody, a girl at my school <clears throat> is like at the game and she's she's a friend of mine. She's like talking my mom down. She's like trying to tell her like, he's fine, blah, blah, blah. So they take me to the hospital in the fucking ambulance. And immediately they're like, they're doing all spinal injury yeah. things where they're just like, you can't, they don't let you do anything. Like they don't let you move. And then they're like, can you feel this? And I'm like, yeah, I feel, you know, they're like grabbing your feet. To, you know what I mean? Like, can you feel it on there? And you're like, yeah, but they're also doing it like, like they're gently touching. You're like, I think I feel that. Can you be a little <laughs> right, more yeah, right. forceful? <laughs> like, why are you barely touching me? Lightly yeah, touching me. Yeah, just touch me. So anyways, we get there, they do an x-ray and they're like, you have like a grade three, deep uh, bone bruise to your tailbone. And they're like, it's going to be incredibly painful for days. There's just nothing you can do. And they're like, there's you. nothing you can do but rest. Yeah. <laughs> so when, I, when I, I, they, they, I get out of the hospital a few hours later and they have like padding. They're like, cause like if you bump something with this, they're like, it's going to be excruciating. They give me some padding and then like I, uh, I go to my house and some of the guys show up and they're like, are you all right? We all thought you might be paralyzed. And I was like, yeah, I know it's fucking terrifying. I'm like, how, how'd we do and They're like, they fucked us up. <laughs> That's right. You didn't even <laughs> yeah, finish, I the didn't game. finish the That's game. That's right. <laughs> and they're like, they kicked the shit out of us. <laughs> and there was a, uh, like we had, 
one dude. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had a like, number of guys <laughs> on that team that played college ball. So these weren't like like slouches. And one of them who was like fucking so diesel, especially for like a high school kid. I was like, I was like, they were tough. He's like, I'm never fucking with those guys ever again. He's like, he's like, I don't even want to play football anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they broke his spirit. They spoke his spirit, dude. <laughs> The next, okay, so that's the uh, last shit. regular season game. And the next week are the playoffs. We're in the playoffs now. Are you that gonna game, be able to play? Well, that's the thing is they're like, first of all, the next morning I'm at my house and my coach calls me at like 7 a.m. He's like, we have like a walkthrough today. I'm like, all right, I have this. Uh, I tell him what I have. He's like, can you not walk? I'm like, I mean, I, I can. He's like, cool. So you'll be there. I'm like, okay. So I go to the next morning and I'm like, fucking, I'm in pain just walking. Right. Then we had practice that week and they keep me out of contact for a couple of days. And then it's the, the playoff game. And at the playoff game, the, the trainer puts this crazy, like home, like, you know, custom pad. So they made it home, and then she yeah. has to like wrap it around me. She's like, so you don't get any impact there. And as she's putting it on me, I'm grimacing. I remember I'm like like this because it, it still hurts. And then my coach is like, are you going to make that fucking face all day? And I was like, are what? Are you serious? Yeah, I was like, he's like, are you playing or not? And I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, stop with the face. And I was like. It hurts. I was, like, I was like, it fucking hurts. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, yeah, then <laughs> we won that game. And we made it to uh, the next round. We we. And then that team that fucked us up won the state championship. Oh, they did. And then the next year when we played them, we made it. Up, we lost again, but we lost by seven. We uh, made it a much better yeah, game. Yeah, it's a moral victory there. And then I remember that I did the dirtiest thing I've done, I ever did in a game, which was against them. Against them, they would do. They were. I mean, they were savages, dude. Like I tell you, they're saying crazy shit. Um, this dude who I'm who is blocking me is doing head slaps. Like, so as like you're, he's going, like Bap! digging Jones over like, there. Yeah. Fuck man. Like doing all kinds. So I don't know. It makes you feel like being dirtier and shit too. So I got, we're at a, a pile. Like the, their running back had run the ball and I, I wrapped them up, but then like, you know, everyone jumps on and I realized I'm, like, there's like 10 guys on me and his foot is here. And I, I just go like, Oh, all right, and I just start leaning on it, and I can, and, and he starts to like, and I just, I'm trying to like, you know, snap, it. yeah, break yeah. his leg, and then <laughs> <laughs> I'm 250 pounds. Yeah. I start and I grab it and I, I start putting all my weight on it, and he starts like flipping out. But there's there's all these bodies on me. Well, as they come out, like as they come off. I start to like lean off of it and then he kicks me and the ref sees that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So he gets a 15 yard penalty. I still think it's the best play I ever made. <laughs> 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 it was, uh, sorry I tried to break your leg. <laughs> but thanks for the 15 yard yeah. on sports with life. <laughs> yeah, they won again, so. <laughs> you just patted their stats moving yeah. them back. Yep. Dude, this was great, man. Thank you for coming on. This is a lot of fun. It was um, great. I love the show. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you for letting me do it here. And now we end with advice to your 16-year-old self. Is there anything you would go back and tell 16-year-old Tom Segura about your what you've learned in life? That that whole GHB and alcohol thing is real, man. <laughs> like you're fine with GHB, but just stop mixing it. <laughs> And you got to do a little more cardio, bro. Pick up the cardio. You're going to need it. That's what I would tell me. That's great. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming on. Yeah, buddy. I love you. I love you too, man. Uh, promote everything again, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go see the new, the new uh, shit. I'm working out on the road. TomSegura.com slash tour. I'm hitting a few clubs. I'm doing all Spanish shows. If you have a Spanish friend or relative or you just want to watch a show that you don't understand. <laughs> Come watch me do stand up in Spanish. Check out the podcasts. Your mom house, your mom's house, Two Bears One K with Bert and uh, the Tom Segura in Español, which is the Spanish one. And of course, yeah, subscribe here on the YouTube channel. 
thanks for for listening watching um, on instagram twitter of course all tom segura segura tom awesome uh as always i'm ryan sickler.com ryan sickler on all social media we'll talk to you all next week